So with that being said, what are some things that popped up for you there where you were like, man, I need to, I need to tighten up these study habits? Because I will say, you know, yeah, let me hear you and I'll follow up with what I had to say. Go ahead. Some things that I that I realized I, I need. You said, what was your question again? Repeat the question. So when you realized that you needed to tighten up your study habits. When did like, I lot, realize like, I mean, I lot, Ooh. Yeah, it's oftentimes in football, you don't, I mean, we know that guys just go around making plays growing up and it's like, all right, I don't really need to listen to that, right? And I always said, I always used to use that as an advantage for me because, I grew up, again, I always say this, I'm a coach's kid. I mean, I think it was my greatest advantage growing up and who my dad was, not, and not just a normal coach, but somebody who had real intricate understanding of it, how I approach the game, how coaches think about it, just just a full spectrum of how to approach this game of elite sports in general. And just that aspect of gaining trust, right? Just growing up and like I used to have a problem with coaches listening to them versus doing what I can do athletically. He's like, man, you do what they tell you to do in practice and then in games you do this. And then like him becoming my coach and like being coached that way, right? And the biggest thing he used to say, the most important thing he used to say is like you got to earn a coach's trust before. When did you hear that line? Do what you were told at practice. And when did you hear that? What? How old were you? I mean, 10, bro, I didn't 11. get that to college, bro. I'm saying 11. That line, I didn't get that until college. That line. But it, was like, but it was like, just to clarify, but it was almost from the standpoint of him telling me to, yo, okay, the coach can only tell you to do so much, but you got to make something happen outside of that. But the dynamic, the, 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 the genius part was at 10 years old, but listen to him in practice. Yeah. Score, score first, in the game, though. First. Score, First, first, before anything, like listen to them in practice. But then when you do this on the game, trust me, but you got to score and you got to trust it when, when yeah. you see it at this time. Because the number one thing with any coach is a level of trust, right? Like it's because when their back's against the wall, it's like, man, I need people, I need prospects or players to be in the place that I'm calling. If I call a blitz, like I need them to hit it this way. I need this guy to be in this zone. I don't care if he's good or not. But if I can, because if he's not going to be there, I mean, I'm going to get fired. And I'm, I'm not, I'm no longer a good coach. And then that's what they care about first. And then can you make a play within how they're coaching you? And that was always, I used to use that as a, I'm, I'm wrapping this all around. So I used to use that going through the ecosystem as a competitive advantage for me when I identify players that didn't do that. And, and you were you one of those players play that did that. Say but that. you were a player that did that, but you made a lot of plays. But, but like, I, I, I remember, is, I, I'm agreeing with you with saying that. That's such a golden, that's a golden rule as a young athlete. And I mean, young. You can be a drafted player, and you're still young in the NFL. Can you make a play the way I'm coaching you to first? Ooh, can you make it first, bro? Because I mean. Cause I'll tell the story when I got to the league, man. Wait, I gotta give a big shout out. Cause like, you know, everyone knows like when you get to the NFL, it's like swimming with sharks. Everybody's looking for their next payday. Everybody's trying to cut people at the knees. People don't really help. But you know, Wade was somebody that kind of reached out and helped me as soon as I came. I came in the league at 20 years old, which people don't realize I was I was a young buck coming into the league. Went behind the ears still. Hey, you know what I mean? What? Young buck, still a college swag. You like, know, I Wade know. and all the boys, Bassy shout out the Bass and all the guys, yeah. you know. Yeah, Bartel, all the guys like kind of looked out for me and kind of showed me the way. And just I always appreciate Wade because he was like the first person. And the first thing that you told me was all your mess ups, right? Like, man, don't do this. I spent my money on that. Don't do this. And I really appreciated it, man. So like even with everything going on and we started getting into it, you heard like Hazlitt and different things and just the coaching points that they were telling you like, wait, you got to do this or make sure you motion on cover two. And then you would go out there and you might not do it, but then you'll make a pick. You might do this. They'll make like you made so many splash plays. I was like that. And I was like, well, these dudes like keep telling them correct stuff. So like, I guess I'm just gonna do everything textbook and just wait. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It it was it was. You had to be one or the other there. You had to be a guy who they could absolute trust or the Trayvon Diggs guy. And but it's could, almost, isn't that like isn't that football though? Like you have yeah. to kind of identify like your coach and who you are to an extent and like what they're looking for. I mean, obviously you lead with trust first, but it's like because yeah, yeah. Like even with that being said, Steph Curry like, to take that you got to you can you or can you truly imagine coaching Steph Curry taking some of those shots as his coach, like wanting the play to be you know like you want things to be organized and he just does that crap, you know like once you see it, we probably see it a hundred times in practice. But you still probably cringe every time. 
Like every time, not, 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 not if they keep going in. Could you, could you, bro? Could you be Andy Reid watching Patrick Mahomes look dead at you on the sideline and throw a ball? I think that's a. I, 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 this is a great point that you're touching on, is it? Because we're going to get into your coaching stuff, but I think that's a level of talent management that certain coaches have and certain coaches don't. It's like recognizing that there's only a level of uh, there's only a certain level of control that you have with special players that's anyway. True. So like it's not whether they do good based on you or bad based on you. And a lot of them when they start, but but they trust them first. They know that it's going to happen. When we play, remember we played Aaron Rodgers that first time, and we were like, "What is this?" Like it's like, and like this, you know what I'm saying? Like the same thing the coaches were probably saying. But I mean, it was it was just things that we never seen on the defense. Whether it was the way he was scrambling, breaking the pocket, throwing the ball all over the place. Do you instantly trust that crazy player? Do you like there's a coach, and do you know do you know his freshman year when he comes in? Do you know? He's, do you know he's rare his freshman year? I think talent, I think talent shines through, right? I think when you start talking about as like, athletes doing special things on the field where it's kind of different, I, I think that's when you see someone's talent match up with the mental aspect of the game and it starts to slow down. And they're trying trying different things. Not even, it's maturity, but it's, I mean, it's, maybe it's not as maturity. It's a level, it's just like pure confidence, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas... Mm-hmm. I know exactly what I can do. I'm playing against little boys and I'm going to do whatever I feel like doing. Like it's, it's more of that mentality than I think it is. I'm a, like, I'm just out here wilding. Like, I think like, even, I think Aaron Rodgers and just different people that make crazy plays. I think they're under control in their mind. Like, I think so too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I think coaches that deal with them are used to it because there's a level of trust. Cause a lot of those people, a lot of those guys that, are like that are typically sound across the board, like in other areas, right? Yeah, like, that's true. Like, yeah. Cause like when you talk about the talent, like there's a level of talent, like when we get back to the talent management piece, certain coaches aren't comfortable with talented players that are just so talented that you don't know what they may do. Right. And even if they make a good play, they're just so afraid of that player making a bad play or it's just not being, I mean, not the 30 by the bus, but like, you know, Michael Parsons only played a limited amount of snaps as a freshman because sometimes wasn't in the right spots, regardless of how great he was, right? And that's sometimes, that's a faulty, that's a, that's an error, right? You just let people kind of figure it out, but there's levels well, to what it. What do you do, though, with the Michael Parsons? Because I, it look, right now, it still looks as if it's worth him making his mistakes that he's going to I mean, make. that's what I'm, but I think, that, I think talent doesn't develop if you doesn't, if you don't let talent develop. And that's the only true. way talent develops is by playing. And that's like a, I mean, that's a thing with coaches and that's just a coaching philosophy in general where it's like, do I want everybody that I trust to know where they're going to be or do I, am I going to be okay with different mistakes and moving forward? Like that's built in a program in college though. If I'm going to have a freshman in my program that's going to, I know he's going to be the guy. Like I got to let him get the kinks out to see if he's the guy faster than, than, than later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sooner than later. Like I think that's the, that becomes the approach. Like, I mean, because even with, like with that being said, because I mean, we talk about the different realities that come in the NFL. I mean, another uh, lesson that I, I mean, kind of was learned from you, man. You had that second year in camp. I, I, you had probably one of the best camps that I've seen like, yeah. a, from, a, from a football player. And I was like, you know, I'm second year. I'm like coming off a toe injury. I'm like, oh, dang. All right. Like, I mean, I always evaluated. Yeah. It's probably a it's probably a negative thing to me because I I got you. that two things objectively. But I was like, man, he had the best camp. Period. Right. So you come out starting, and I was playing nickel and all that stuff. And then there was like a a rotational change where you got sat down like week four or five, and I was like super. I was like confused because I was one of those people that was again coach's kid. Where it's like, oh, if someone's sitting down, it's their fault. Like. They did something, they got beat out, and they're just like, the coach doesn't like them. Yeah. There's no way that you could, like, literally be better, like, the whole way and get, get sit down. And yeah. that was, like, a reality check for me. It was like, oh, this is the business. Oh, this is the guy they drafted. Oh, this isn't the guy that did this. Oh, oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, <laughs> lock in, dog. Like, then, then the next week, uh, I mean, the week before, then the starting quarter guy, when Fakir got fired, I was like – just a whirlwind, but it was just, I hated this. I mean, I'm using you as an example, but yeah, bro. it was the, it was like that time of seeing it where I was like, my man's balling. Like, I, I don't really, 
How did you how did you handle that? Uh, bro, I don't know. God, um, at the time, <laughs> yo, my brother asked me one time, um, at like, uh, he said, bro, how did you go to work every day? And I really, I, and when he asked me that, I didn't have an answer. I was just getting up and going. And uh, a lot of it, was, bro, so you got to imagine what I went through in high school. Yeah, but that's what I, it kind of built up. To yeah. Extent, right? Like you like waited your turn in high school. You got the college. You kind of waited your turn and you played and did your thing. Bro, I started and one full league. season in college too. One full season. So that's what I'm school, saying. Then you get college. you get to the you get to the league and it's like you're working up. And then now this is like your this is like your third or fourth year. And now this is your this was your go. We here, bro. We here. We here. And you was and you were showing up. <laughs> you, were show, you were showing up. Uh, like, how uh, did, like seriously, because these are these these are type of stories that I think people don't realize that. Like can derail a career and or really put you or, or really put you in a, a mental space where you're like, ah, how do how do I pivot from this or how do I bounce back and get my confidence back? So like, take me through that a little. I bit. I just had my son. All that life is happening. You're a professional football player, but you're a grown man living life. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about That's that. You're tough. having a good season statistically, like breaking passes up, whatever. They um, sit you down. How do you? How are you? How you I'm confused. That? I don't have an answer. It's a long season. It's the NFL. I keep hearing this business. I don't get an answer from the coach until week 14. He sits me down because I just don't even dress because at this point, they just bringing in more DBs, which is just a complete slap in the face. <laughs> like, what did I do, you know, to put me in this situation? Here's another thing that I had to continue my career with. Every time I went somewhere, they wanted to know what landed me in that situation in St. Louis. Bro, I ain't got no answer. Every place I went wanted to know. Bro, when I got to Miami, they wanted to know. When I got to uh, Detroit, they, I don't know. I don't have no answer for you. That's that's true. So what would be some advice for some of the prospects that are getting ready to go into the NFL? Well, since I've analyzed my career now 30,000 times, um, <laughs> I, I, I will say, um, Make as many plays as you can and live with that. You know, like go play the game that got you there and and have absolutely no regrets. You know, if, you, if you're going to go try to intercept the pass, lay out for it. If you go try to intercept it, lay out for it. Ain't, what, what are you, like, what are you waiting on? You know, to take every opportunity you get and just, and rest easy. If you, if you get one chance to play in a game and you bite on a double move, bro, go for it full speed. Like, I, I just go play ball a way that you don't have any regrets about what happened afterwards. You're not thinking back, I should have did this, should have did that. Go do what you felt you should have. I, I, I've noticed that a lot more guys who are able to just go be themselves have better careers. A hundred percent. When they know themselves, right? Where, where, where everything fits and it's like, yes. oh, this is who I am. And like you said, dare to be great. And there's a level of confidence that comes with that fear of daring to be great. Like before you jump a curl, there's a feeling of fear. Like this yes. might be a double move, right? Yeah, like, are you turn, like every move before you make a play is like, there's a little bit of fear. We used to talk about corners having a level of effort level, right? Or a player just having an effort level where it's just like, it comes to that point where it's like, I got to go or I wait. Because that's between making a Interception for a pick six, a normal interception, a bre pass breakup, a completion bro, versus a completion small, spin out. That's between ten million. That's a fifty My million. Bad. I'm trying. I, I, was, I was getting to. I was. I, it's the difference between ten million. I was trying to help you out with the the the, the youth and the and the skill development. So that's yeah, what we're yeah. going to jump in. <laughs> so that's what we're going to jump into now, man. So congratulations to we got the coach here, man, at the FBU uh, eighth grade, or is it an age and under? Eighth grade, seventh grade, eighth. sixth grade, and they have a fifth grade one. Seven, okay, eighth grade national champions, mm -hmm. man, in the skill development FBU league. These guys won it all. You got some like talented players, and I, we obviously on this podcast we talk about just the career development aspect, the different uh, recruiting transition points, and earlier and earlier. Now we're talking about getting recruited in the high school, and a lot of the early identification process starts in the seventh and eighth grade you know, time frame. So what you're doing that's a little different than other places, whether you're just running plays or being sophisticated in your approach of football, but it's like a really uh, skill-based approach at that level. Can you talk to me a little bit why you want to, why is that something that you wanted to well, this is the, focus this on? Is the, this is the age right here where um, their bodies are growing and they're kind of starting to develop in ways and they need just fine tuning. Like a lot of, 
a lot of what they do as kids is about winning. And you're going to do a lot of weird stuff to win a game at the youth level. But when these guys start getting to this point to where they're being asked to play these different positions in middle school, there are certain things that they need to know. Like if, if they're a defensive lineman, they need to know how to use their hands. They need to know the correct stance. They don't need to be just getting up there doing whatever. If they're linebackers, they need to know how to disguise. They need to know how to um, uh, um, scrape over the top and run. They need to know how to run through alleys. Like they're just th that terminology. Like if, if not, what else are you get, you know, teaching these kids at this time? I've seen middle school games. I know that it's, it's so like, basic that they can get this stuff in and, and it's just not being done and every kid plays middle school regardless if they play select or not um so there's just a window of opportunity to just just bombard them with information that i think will help them skip a lot of nonsense that they will absolutely be given while in high school if you can get it into them now and that's a that's a very that's a very true point, right? You go to a lot of high school games and you can see whether it's a corner playing his his butt completely to the inside or just playing wild wild wild. Well, we got techniques free safeties just at a, seven yards out here. Free safeties in the middle of the field at seven yards. I have never seen anything the deep middle safeties at seven right. yards. But this is what I'm saying, where there's a level to skill development or just the X's and O's of football that lacks at that level at seventh eighth grade or just i mean i'll say high school and below right where a lot of times you're leaning on those athletic kids or like that special player or then you have some places that have full-blown programs but i think what you're doing that's very innovative is like giving these guys true fundamental skills like in football right we talk about db slam and slam squatting and uh, doing all these different things that I'm like, Oh, I didn't do that. So I got to the NFL and I'm like legit. Like I was just pressing people in college just off of athletic ability. Right. I'm just pressing. I mean, until I got to the league and coach Miles, shout out to coach Miles and uh, coach Terrell Austin, who spent some, he's the D coordinator now at, and with the Steelers, but I spent some time with him for my pre-draft process, just getting used to backpedaling playing square because at Penn state we played single high and I was shuffling I was sideways shuffling like Asante Samuel. So it was, it was just something a different technique to learn, right? But it was something. That Is that I, how I you still, felt about it? Did you just did you view it as just a different technique to learn? It was just a new technique to learn. I felt I felt more comfortable learning a technique. Like even like in high school, like I, I played running back, and in high school I was taught we ran zone, and we, they put the zone package in in my in my living room. So. Angles of the thing. Oh, if the if the nose tackle run at the bubble, if he does this, we bounce this way. So like I played more like a technician from like even a high school running back. And then in that, I found my ways to kind of do what I wanted to do. So I had like fundamental understanding. Okay, like we press the tackle, do this, we're reading this. And so coming to the corner, it was just like cover people. Cover, cover. So I didn't like so when I did start like messing up, whether it's like spread eagle and different things of that nature, I never had a foundation, but I understood defensive structure and stuff like that because our D coordinator was our corner coach at Penn State, but that's a different story. Yeah, that's cheap. That's cheap. <laughs> but it was more so understanding the full spectrum of everything, yeah. but still not getting down to the, we're talking about the actual technique, skill development that you're talking about. A lot of times it's taken for granted with younger athletic kids in football, right? Is in basketball, you got to know how to dribble, shoot, to, to be decent at one to go somewhere in football you really you can develop skill in college and you'll get an opportunity but what you're doing is you're giving these guys some tools and skills regardless of how they develop athletically to set themselves up to get that opportunity to go to college because now we're playing with like little little thin layers of separation when we're talking about guys getting scholarships going here nil transfer all that different stuff so and you got a ball now like you gotta be an absolute baller now you can't be no half baller they trying to sign already made people now and this is what they doing they signing already made people that can come in let if, if your name not caleb downs or something like that like they don't they go go get somebody out the transfer portal so you better have something else now besides speed and size you better have a game to go with it and what you're like that skill development brings a level of trust to coaches we talk about skills and fundamentals and it's like oh i know he knows exactly how to play know exactly what he's going to do or exactly where he's going to be 
I mean, it gives you a leg up. I mean, I think football is about angles, numbers, and, you know, angles, numbers, and uh, and speed at that point. Because, <laughs> yeah, so they, they continue to stay on the point of just that development phase in seventh, eighth grade. Because like you're saying, you're getting ready to go into ninth grade. Now that the business is coming and circling it down. What are you seeing some of the main hurdles that some of the athletes are having at that time frame? They don't talk. Into- they don't talk enough. So I'm, I'm a big advocate about talking. Um, something that's super funny to me. That like communicating on the field? Yes. Um, so, so it's super funny to me if you were to actually go to like a younger kid's game, like 10 years old. Say you go to a little 10-year-old game. And if you was on defense and you just start yelling out, it's going to be a toss. It's going to be a dive on defense. If you're a linebacker and you just start saying that, them kids look at you. Like, why you keep calling our plays out? <laughs> like, you could just say it's going to be a pass. You could say everything you wanted to, um, and they just go look at you weird. And it, it, it's just, it's the community, it's the the reminding the, the your teammates about, like, what type of situations you can be. I, I don't know. The linemen don't talk. Linemen should never not be talking. Like, what else are they doing, even as kids? Just blocking straight? No, this is, a, that's important because, like, I, I... I just think about the time where all these critical things, like when I felt like they were important, right? Like whether it's talking, I don't think I started talking a lot until I got to the league, right? Like I'm running across, I'm just screaming out stuff. And then it started realizing like, oh, I'm just saying stuff. And I'm realizing, and, oh, we got cut split. Oh, yes. like, watch this crosser, watch this. So like the fact that you're even getting like younger seventh and eighth graders football acumen to kind of process and do those different things at a younger age is important because I mean, my daughter plays tennis now and you see like we were talking about how a match goes or just different strategy, other sports, there is a strategy and technical development that goes into that process. And sometimes that lacks in football and it's just kind of focused on like the toughness part, right? Like, Oh, I gotta be tough. Gotta lift these weights. Gotta do this. But like the actual skills that come along with football. So as you guys are doing that, have you seen, um, have you seen any pushback? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I get pushback from coaches. Interesting. What is the pushback from coaches? I'm doing too much. Huh. They too young for that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So they gonna so, get so pushed back are, are, are me they, after that. So are these are these coaches that played at a higher level or no? Uh, I think it's coaches that have won just in what I'm doing. They have won around the realm that I'm in. So they're right. And I get that. But when it comes to X's and O's and the black and whites of football, what I'm saying will kind of be right, too. And I want you just to hear me like I'm hearing you. I'm going to respect what you've done because you've won here. And I'm new because I'm still new. I'm the new guy. But, bro, I come in pushing it all the time. I push, bro. I push all limits. I push all limits. And I don't I don't hold back to anybody. Like, I think if you coaching, if this, I, I'm, I came through this as a youth kid through youth sports and made it. I want this to be right if we go continue to do this. And do you feel like it's because that skill development and these technical aspects on the field are things that kind of stopped you from reaching where you wanted to reach? Or like, is this something like what makes you, what makes you go so hard on just the skill development and just the football IQ aspect at this age for football? I know what I can get in right here. Um, I can get this in before they're cocky and arrogant, before they think they're good. I can give them some stuff right here that can last them. If I'm if if I'm detailed enough with what I'm doing and my approach, and I hit on certain things with each kid, and bro, I'm, you know, I I take notes on kids. I text these kids. I call these kids. Like I called a quarter. Me and the quarterback had a conversation for about an hour the day before the championship and the semifinal game. Uh, but that was my kid from two years ago, you know, um, with the team that we had. But I'll do anything to just make sure they get it. Like, if, if they don't leave with the complete understanding of what you're trying to get in, it, you know, they, they can't grow. They can't grow until they can understand what you're trying to put in, and then we can go to the next thing. Um, fun, uh, do you do you realize this that it, in the league they gave they gave everything to us five different ways, walk through, jog through, practice, notes, film, 
five different ways. So everybody, however you got the information, you could get it. If we don't do that, how much harder is it going to be to do that with kids? But give it to them all these type of different ways so they can have a chance to understand it so they can grow. And give them the, because <clears throat> I, I love that you're saying that because then you're giving them the building blocks to learn how to take in that information. Yes. Right? Like how to take in the different ways of taking in the plays or showing a different con conceptual thinking before you get into high school or before different things happen just throughout your football journey or your athletic journey because <clears throat> you, you're hitting on something that I think is really important that I'm, I try to do what I mean, we're trying to do here at Blue Chip Academy. We talk about career paths and what guys are doing. We kind of relate it back to um, the recruiting process. And everybody's like, well, why are you starting high school? We're talking about the league and going to get a job. And, I'm just, and I just, from even my, per, my personal journey, I'm hearing from you, is that there is an aspect of once you make that college decision, there's very little development from there to the end of your career based on how intense everything is in college, how intense everything is getting ready for a league, how intense everything is when you get to like, like at that point, you're trying to play catch up. So what you're trying right. to do is get a head start before you get to college. Yes. So you're ahead of the curve. So you can at least be, be a, still ahead of the curve when you're getting to the point of, transition and out of football or just take, making that second contract going to the league wherever your end journey is that this football or this sports ecosystem brings you a lot of times that has to be implemented and and kind of seeded into you at that ninth eighth ninth tenth like high school area or a, age range right so for sure dude I've, i have paid 12 year old quarterbacks this is not a lie I have paid. Don't, don't break any. Be sorry, you say pay anybody. Don't, don't break any NCAA rules. You pay. Don't be paying anybody. Bro, it, was you know, NIL. it was a twelve-year-old <laughs> kid. I paid him because he went against his coach's wishes in the game and made a quarterback decision to throw backside on three by one. You're playing seven on seven. Like if you draw, if you're if you're coaching seven on seven and you still telling your kid where to throw the ball, something's absolutely wrong. The kid then came up to me after the game and said, I'm not the coach of the team. I just knew the kid. I'm not the coach of the team. He said, hey, I, I, I did it. He told me to throw it over here, and I threw it to the backside one-on-one. -on -one. I asked him, what happened? Because he was smiling. He said, we scored a touchdown. I said, what did your coach say to you? He said, good job. That was a great decision by me. That's what, but that's what I was, that's what I I was to referring to. I didn't entice him by paying him to do that. But, but it, 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 <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Everybody pops was like, yeah, the coach say do this. But like, look, bro, do that in the game. Just do that in the joint. Because when you score, he's going to say, good job, bro. Like, <laughs> good job. You ever see that that Bill Belichick joint where, uh, not Bill Belichick, uh, Bill, what's the old old Ravens coach when uh, Ed Reed makes an interception? He's like, get down, Ed, get down, Ed. He's yes. like, go, Ed, go, yes, Ed, go. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's like, but I really believe, man, that's so critical in just talent management or just talent acquisition in, in general, because like there's a level of bias of what you've seen, what you've been exposed to, where people have had pitfalls. And I think we all try to come from like our different areas of where the game affected us or where we can see, can mend some of the holes that or just speed up the process for some of the guys that are coming through. So before we jump off, man, most influential coach of your career or teammate. Oh, okay. I got I got an interesting one for you with the teammate. Not even my teammate, but um, alumni from my school. I got a reason why, though. Um, but I'm going to give you the – you asked me for the coach. Kevin Coyle slash Mike Zimmer. Okay. Mike why Zimmer was the first person that took me by myself and said, this is how you press. That was my fourth year in the NFL. He said, when I look at you, the way you move your feet, this is how you press. And he took me alongside the defensive coordinator at the time for the Cincinnati Bengals, took me along to myself while the DBs were doing some other stuff. And he just worked with me. And he put me in a position to where I was instantly comfortable, bro. It took 10 minutes. I now teach children to press the same way. Like, <laughs> that, that but Mike was, Zimmer taught you how to teach. So it was, it was, it was um, <laughs> no, and, and Daryl Green is the other coach. Daryl Green is the other coach. I spent two years with him in the summer. Um, you don't get Coach Wade without Daryl Green, for sure. That's what's up. Uh, That's what's up. <laughs> player, teammate, no lie to you, bro. Peyton Manning. 
All right, and the reason I'm saying it is Peyton Manning had me work out with him at Tennessee one time. Peyton Manning showed me that day I was never going to be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> you got to you got to explain what you mean. <laughs> what, 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 what did he do? How that how that happen? He want to work out. I remind him of Mar Harris. I'm cute like Marvin Harrison size, right? So he wants me to meet him in the facility at two o'clock. I'm geeked. Bro, I'm leaving class. Like, you know, this is off season. I'm out of class. Like, I ain't going back to class. I got to go work out with Peyton. They get it. I'm serious. It's Peyton in town. When Peyton's in town, the, the school shuts down. Um, I go in the, I go, I, I put my stuff on. I get there at two. He been in here for an hour already. He in drenching sweat, bro. Ain't nobody in here but him and the equipment manager who's tossing them snaps. When I get in here in this hour after he's drenching in sweat, he's got me running routes that I don't even know exist because I'm a freshman and he is Peyton Manning in the NFL. So I'm going to give you one of the routes he gave me and leave you with how the rest of the day went. He wanted a stutter and go comeback post. And he's telling me a stutter and go comeback at 18 and then break to the post. I got to get across just cover two safeties face. I don't even really know what he's talking about. But as I'm watching him do this, and I've seen him a couple times, he is back there dodging four, five tacklers. Ain't nobody coming at him, Justin Kane. Nobody's coming. He is scooting up in the pocket. He's dropping back. He's dodging. I mean, he is he's throwing ducks because he can't get his feet set. Ain't nobody coming. He's cussed me out on this stutter go comeback in 18 post because I didn't get across the field fast enough. He threw the ball to the other hash, bro. I'm on the right. He threw the back. I'm not right. I didn't get over there. I, I knew. So after I was done for my two hours, he told me he was going to meet me at the bar after he got a, finished with his last hour. I knew, bro. I knew, like, I couldn't go no more. I couldn't run no more stutter go comebacks at, at post routes, dog. You can only run so many of them joints. It's like, oh, okay. I, I, I see he got a little bit of something different. So it, the, 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 his, everything was a game. Everything. Every, from the way you jogged on the field, from the way you drank your water, from the way you got to play from him to went to go line up. Everything was a game. If you did that and you wasn't checking with the refs, it wasn't in sync with him. Like, everything was a game, dog. It was insane. But it showed me what it looked like if you wanted to be great. It's, it's, like, it's pretty insightful to hear other players talk about, okay, this guy has something that I thought I had or I thought I wanted, but maybe it's, like, ticking a little different. Because, like, I had that a moment in the league, and uh, it's funny because it was with Revis. It was with uh, D. Reeve. Really? The Reeve, yeah, we, I was like, just had a, at, at a parking lot one time. Me and my little cousin was chilling. He saw Reeve coming out the club. He was just, I mean, you know, in the league, yeah, chilling. You at the crib. See him, we just started kicking it, and you know, he's talking. He's like, man, you know, my freshman, my rookie year, I had my toes. So I'm like doing a lot of scouting. So that's when this, Namdi was balling, right? And so like, so he had the list of different DBs. You know, we watching guys, watching all these casts, and Reeve started talking about, you know, I'm the. He had a ball. He bought out that year. It was his, his rookie year. But, yeah, he did. And it was like, man, I'm the best. I'm the best corner in the league. I mean, this is like three o'clock in the morning. There's like three or four. I mean, it's not like a big crowd. It's just us. Okay. I'm the best corner in the league. And I was like, what? I'm like, I was like, you probably like top ten. I'm like saying it's the Reeves. This is before he's the Reeves Island, right? So I'm before the island, like, yo. Got, before the island, this is before. Dog. This is before. I mean, like, he's from the crib. I mean, this is my, this is my yeah, man. So like, it's nothing for me that I felt comfortable saying it. Yeah. So it was. <laughs> so it was like. You know, he's like, nah, man, like, you know, I, it's this, it's this. I didn't did this. I'm going to be like, I'm going to do this. And it was like the level of him believing it. I was yeah. like, I'm not even arguing with him. I'm arguing with myself. <laughs> I was like, I was like, and I started thinking, I'm like, Justin, do you believe in yourself like this? I was like, damn. I was like, I don't think I do. Like, I, this, I had to be like real with my, I had to be complete. He was saying, he went on like a long soliloquy. He was talking about stars and like, there's only one star. You got to be able to do different stuff and like how you believe. I mean, he he gave like a master class in his parking wow. lot, bro. After the club, yeah, yeah, and I was just like obsessed about it, bro. And I was thinking like, damn, I don't, 
I don't, in my mind, in my mind, <laughs> do I believe? And I was like, <laughs> straight up. But then that next year, the next year they named Manhattan Allen after him. So shout out to him going to the Jets. Shout out to Reed, yo. You know what I mean? No, yeah, he uh, really was that guy. Western I have PA. no, I have no explanation as to how he did what he did. I have none. When people ask me like, what, what, what was it about? I, I don't, I don't know. He just wanted it bad. I have no explanation. He was just great. He he put so he put that one year, that one year he put on film. He, I don't think like the the common fan will ever realize what type of artwork he put on film in terms of play by play covering a receiver all over the field. Like if the quarterback threw it or if he didn't throw it. Like that year when they Cheerio. named that named that island, I don't think there was a play where a receiver was open all season. <laughs> Man, on any route, bro, like on anything, like I've never seen anything like that. Cause you know, you watch the all twenty-two film in the, in the defensive room; it's a different look. Yeah, for when sure. You see it, like every... shout out to Reed, man, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame, man. Bro. Man, so bro, I appreciate you jumping on, Wade, man. No a little problem, blast man. from the fine, past, yo. man. Like we said, dog, just making sure that everybody has a plan when they're going through, and this skill development, even in the football ecosystem, is important. And a lot of different transition points. Like Coach Wade said, I mean, make sure you take full advantage of it because there's no passion to be found playing small and selling for a life that is less than the one that you are capable of living. And that's what we're trying to, you know, mend here and just make sure that everybody has the skills and the different things that we ran into throughout this ecosystem that could have taken our, our careers to the next level or wish we would have known a little bit earlier and just set you up. So when you get ready to transition and go into a career or find that next passion that like what Wade said, like guys that are like fully comfortable in themselves in the game and where it's fit and where it fits in your life always have like the most success that we've seen. So make sure you guys organize this stuff and you guys check out LIG sports group and the branding and NI recruiting era workshop with LIG sports group, where we go through the different aspects of the new NIL recruiting ecosystem and the recruiting uh, tactics that are coming out and the opportunities, brand creation and curation and all that good stuff. You guys check it out. I have the links below. But again, Wade, appreciate you jumping on, bro. And no doubt, man. Next time, man. Always, I'm here, homie. Always, always, man. Good luck in the off season, Thank getting you. these guys right. No doubt. <laughs>